Hello there and welcome to another episode of Coding in AL. I release this episode every Monday and sometimes twice a week. And today we are going to look at how to run Business Central on premise using Docker. So what is Docker? Docker is a tool which is used to automate the deployment of applications in lightweight containers so that applications can work efficiently in different environments. Here is an example of how Docker is visualized. In a Docker context, the tool Docker, we have the infrastructure definitely and then the host operating system that is Windows or Linux and then we have the Docker layer and then it has now all these applications installed on top of the Docker layer. So it's like Docker is virtualizing the operating system. In a real virtual scenario, we have the infrastructure and then the hypervisor or the, the virtual environment. And then we have another OS. If this hypervisor is an OS, okay, this is an OS. And then we have another OS. So Docker helps in making it easier. Okay, the problem of saying it's running in, on this machine, but it doesn't run on this machine. Because the machine environments are different, um, the operating system is different from this other operating system. Docker has neutralized all that, and you have all these apps running as containers. And they can be able to run in any environment. As simple as that especially for a beginner don't uh, overcomplicate it just understand that it's virtualizing your operating system and again you are releasing space anytime this app is not using uh, docker then you have the free uh, memory space because it's a lightweight uh, container it's not like the virtual environment which is heavier on the OS and in a virtualized environment you'll need maybe to install a different uh, virtual machine for each application that you want to run on but in docker only the docker will run all the applications that you want so uh, to install just go to docker.com and install it from here so if you're using windows 10 home version maybe you may not use the uh, this uh, docker de for desktop just go and look at uh, the docker docs i have not uh, opened the link here yeah it should be here the docker the docs it will explain about um the windows uh version windows 10 home pro version because there's something that i saw if you're having windows 10 pro it may not work for you docker for windows here it is so just download the app and install okay windows 10 64 bit yeah there's something here that you can you may be interested to look into i have not uh, gone deep into it so for the uh, for if you are os in, is windows 10 pro please look at that so for the rest you can just download uh, docker and i'm assuming this is now for windows for linux as well download for linux and then when you install, ignore the Kubernetes. You'll see a prompt of the Kubernetes. I've already installed Docker, so I'll not repeat the installation process uh, due to time. But you can use all the defaults. The defaults are safe. Just use the default, uh, uh, the default, uh, okay, the default applications or the default settings that the, it will give you while installing the Docker. Okay. After on installing on the system tray, you'll have uh, Docker running here. This is Docker. The icon is a whale, so you'll see uh, the, this whale icon, and then you'll have uh, all this. When you right click on the system tray, you'll have this all these options. So if you are now, uh, if it's uh, installed by default, it it is running linux containers so for us since we want to use the windows containers 
it should read switch to Linux containers because at that time it will be switch to Windows containers. Click on this uh, button so that you can switch it to run for Windows containers. I hope I'm clear there. And then Hyper-V should be enabled for you to run Docker. So um, let me open my control panel under uh, programs. It should be programs. Add or remove turn Windows features on and off this Hyper-V should be enabled. Okay, let me mention I'm using Windows 11. Windows 11 still runs okay with Docker. So don't worry if you're using Windows 11. You can turn on. Make sure that is also turned on before you can be able to run um, the Docker. So I have an alert. Uh, we use a PowerShell script to install Docker on our Windows, to install Business Central on our Windows. Because um, there is a simplified version because we could, uh, there are several docker commands like docker pull to pull an image because docker works in images and containers. You pull an image from the docker hub. Uh, Microsoft has a docker hub. Let me just open it. Uh, docker hub business central. She'll be there. So the images are stored here in form of uh, artifacts. At some point, they were stored in. They, they were storing an image for every other version, but now they use the doc, Docker artifacts. So here is the hub. Uh, okay, it no longer has this. Uh, uh, they have a generic image. They don't have the specific version image that they had previously. So, like, let me just briefly go through it. You see, like, this is the the version that you'll use, uh, the, the command that you'll use to pull Docker. Before I go there, sorry, it's my first time using it. I've not used this for so long. After installing Docker, make sure you confirm <laughs> by running the cmd in an elevated cmd uh, i have not elevated mine you can just type docker it will show you all these commands so to verify that you have installed docker well make sure that all these are seen okay uh where is it so we have these tags you use docker pull and the, this was the previous way of pulling a docker image it's like the way you pull pull and push pull basically just getting the image to your machine and then creating a container from the image and then now you'll be able now to run that uh, particular container, that environment because it's an isolated container. So how to use a, an image? Now, we have now this uh, PowerShell module, BC Container Helper, which can be installed in our, uh, from the PowerShell gallery. This is how I advise you to use. Just run this command, install module BC container helper force. We install this module in our PowerShell. So before installing the PowerShell module, make sure that we have set our execution policy in our PowerShell to be remote signed. It will enable us to run scripts from, okay, remote scripts rather, if it's the first time you're using your PowerShell, make sure that this execution um, policy is set to remote sign. If you're not sure about the current execution policy that has been set in your PowerShell, just run this command, get in an elevated PowerShell, get execution policy. You see mine is remote signed. It means it can be able to run the PowerShell scripts. So let's move forward here. Okay, I've uh, really added a lot in a few minutes. I hope we are together. Okay, installing the, okay, let me come here to the BC container helper, PowerShell module. So to support the use of containers, Optional PowerShell scripts are available which support setup develop uh, support setup development environments and use the BC container helper to work with containers. Yeah, they're giving versions there. 
and this is the com command that we had just looked into where is uh, yeah we had this uh, module open and once installed you can r run this command to see the functions that are available in the bc container helper previously the for the nav versions we are using the nav container helper but uh, on coming to business central since there were some features that were working well with that nav container helper a new uh, powershell module was created just for the purpose of new updates so it's advisable you use the bc uh, container helper module once installed you just run powershell okay first set the execution policy to remote signed in your powershell next install this module install module bc container helper force just copy this command you don't need to type it and all that just simplify after that uh, okay make sure the power uh, it's an elevated partial that is and then write this write nav container helper welcome text to see the available commands that are there come on do 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 so where is my partial uh is not recognized and then do 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 write nav container helper text to see which functions are available for use okay so my partial is not having um right nav container helper welcome text okay the term right uh, is not recognized as the name of a cmd uh, in a script file check the spelling or name if the path is included and all that okay maybe i have not let me reinstall this module that i had installed i don't know what's happening it should be there I expect it to be there so install the module bc container helper force so after installing that now we'll use this uh, artifact url it gives us the link to the on-premise version so the only thing that will change here is uh, the type to on-premise and then uh, we, we now create now this bc container and then we specify these conditions and we will be good to go it's as easy as that so let me open my uh, integrated script editor powershell integrated script script editor and here is my command that I'm, i've used i've created it in our powershell integrated script editor to make it easier to edit and uh, you get the artifact URL and then you create the new container from this particular URL and then you will give it the name that you prefer and then it will now download the image and create the container it will get the image that is located in this artifact URL and install your container so on this um, let me come back here okay so this is the progress of, of the downloads for mine it has finished and then it will give you a link of the location where it has installed like on your browser when you view this on the web client you'll be able to view um, your containerized business central well installed there well installed in your machine okay i've installed the container module ah this command is failing but okay it was working before the tutorial <laughs> i have to go back here maybe there's something i missed on uh, where is it uh, let's come back to this module write bc container helper welcome text let me see if there's something wrong with that. it is the same 
Okay, I think the command from the other side had a problem from the docker. <laughs> Maybe I have to verify what it was. So when you run this command, write bc container helper. Um, write bc container helper text. It will show us now when you install the module, these are the features that you have installed. All these scripts that you can be able to run uh, and install your business central. Okay. And here is the URL that you can use. For me, I've, I've taken the US version of the uh, of business central, the latest version. And then uh, this is the command, a new BC uh, container. I'm not, I'm not going to details of what it means, uh, but uh, in the next video, when we, we go to into now the development and all that, we'll go into the details, but we, I can open this. And I'll also show you a way of uh, having generating this script using a graphical user interface. There's another PowerShell module for enabling us to generate that particular PSI PS1 dot <laughs> PS1 file from the PowerShell module. Let me copy this URL. But I had hop opened it here, so I can just reopen. Here it is. So. I've installed now my business central on premise in my container. If I specify a different version, I can create, I can get that um, artifact URL and then create another container for another uh, business central, um, let me say version, and I'll be able to run them simultaneously in my machine. So Docker is a very good uh, tool that every developer should be using if you haven't been using it consider using it it will save you a lot of time it will save on the memory it will save a lot and it is very efficient i will see you in the next video may god bless you if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one